Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to talk about stereo layers for bass. Uh, during a live stream I got a request for uh, a video talking about stereo layers for bass lines. And I actually had an example laying around in the project that I was working on at that exact time. But I also have another example here. So I have two examples and we're going to make a stereo layer from scratch. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting video. Now, if you have a request that you want me to talk about, uh, you can leave a comment in the in the comment section and uh, I might be able to tackle it if it's interesting enough for a full video. Otherwise, I'll try to respond in the comments itself. Uh, so if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, uh, then let me know in the comments. Uh, but for now, let's dive into the project that I've set up for you. Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly say if you want to support this channel, go to my Spotify or Apple Music. There you can follow me and add some of my songs to your daily listening playlist. Thank you very much. Let's get back into the video. So here are three examples. As you can see, example one, two and three. Now this is one which is just a kick and bass where we're going to put a layer on top. But for these two, we have um, two examples where one, we have a little bit more of a complex setup and two, we have a very simple setup with just uh, one main baseline and one stereo layer. Uh, both are very effective in what they do in that they add a little bit of grid to the mid range as well as some stereo uh, information to your baseline. So let's quickly listen to uh, the first two examples and then we'll uh, talk about how they work. So one thing to note here is that they're pretty prominent, at least in my headphones, I can hear both in the, the, the first example and in the second example, there's a lot of stereo information and a lot of grittiness. Uh, and in isolation, I want you to know that uh, it it's count, sounds kind of overdone, uh, but within the context of a full track where you have reverb tails, you have delays, uh, but you also have main, main leads and stuff like that, it can be really underwhelming. Uh, so it's not necessarily a layer that you hear all of the time. Uh, as these layers shine through, especially when you have uh, not a main lead on top of it, which is playing constantly. Uh, but when you're in the sections of your track where, uh, as I said, you have reverb tails and delay tails. That's why I mentioned those earlier, because those are the sections where you're going to hear these layers the most. So looking at the first layer, it's actually made up of two stereo layers here. So let's listen to the both of them together without the kick and the bass. And we'll just zoom in. And I want you to note that there's this kind of rhythm that happens because of the, the, the octave that one of these two layers uh, happens to, to play. So if we look in the MIDI, what you can see is that we have uh, these um, this kind of MIDI where there's this little change here where it's just an octave lower. So listening to this on its own. You can hear this kind of rhythm. Now this rhythm is not just the MIDI, it's also the automation. So going into the automation, you can see here we have this macro, which is basically determining our rhythm here. And you can see where um, this is playing this is playing and this is playing, we have a little bit more of an openness than where it's playing here. And then also this one and this one sounds a lot more open. The only difference is, is that these two notes are very low in terms of their, their, their volume because they're happening on the kick and therefore I've turned the volume down of those individual notes. So there it's not really that noticeable. It's especially noticeable uh, in these here. You can definitely hear the difference between this one and this one uh, being a lot lower. Obviously, you can also hear that this one is very open, um, but it's so low in volume that it doesn't really shine through as much as uh, the difference between these two, in my opinion. So now let's actually go into the patch and see some of the oddities that happens when you're actually producing a stereo layer. So this baseline was um, kind of created with stereo in mind from the very beginning. So there's a few oddities that we're doing here. The first one is that we're removing lower harmonics from both of the oscillators that we're using. As you can see, the lowest harmonic is completely removed. We don't want to deal with the sub bass. For this one, there's even more 
higher harmonics removed. You can see that the second harmonic is removed and the third harmonic is nearly removed. So in terms of mid-range, low mid-range energy and sub-energy, there's not really anything there. The second oddity is the phasing here. So if we look at where the phase is, this one is at 178 and this one is at zero. What happens is, uh, imagine these two peaks. If you start to play one from the peak and one from the start, you can imagine that this peak is going to basically be shifted 180 degrees from this peak here. And because there's not anything else in it, it's basically going to sound like two peaks. So you imagine a peak here and then a peak here. And what that's going to do is it's going to provide this kind of this octave up kind of feeling. Uh, it's a little bit different, obviously, because the waveforms aren't exactly equal. So you get this really cool kind of tone that you cannot really get by just taking a soul wave and shifting it up an octave. You really have to do it with this two oscillator setup. And if I set this to 178, you can hear how it sounds almost like the layer uh, goes down by an octave. So that's the first neat trick. The second trick is that we're adding some extra stereo width using panning. So I've set up this little rhythm here. This is the LFO that you're looking at for the rhythm. And I've just assigned it to the panning. And I'm not really hard panning anything. As you can see, we're just going like 50% left and 50% right, as opposed to 100% left and 100% right. But this is going to add a little bit of that movement uh, that creates a unique stereo field. Now, the second thing here in the patch is that we have uh, an LFO for controlling uh, the filter cutoff. And this is where the macro comes in because this macro is mapped to the openness of the LFO, the, the, the kind of sustained value of the LFO, which in turn means that uh, the filter cutoff is going to be higher or lower depending on where this macro is set. So this LFO also controls other things. So we have another filter here and this is the same idea in that the cutoff is going to be higher uh, in the sustain uh, when the macro is turned up. Uh, and we also are using it for uh, the high band. So we're adding extra high frequencies the more the macro is turned up. So all of this is there to kind of create this extra grittiness in certain notes and to add that extra rhythm that we were talking about. Because that's really what a stereo layer is good for is to add some groove, add some rhythm to it. Uh, but you don't only want to use groove and rhythm. You also want to kind of get a stable layer on top of it if you want some real nice stereo field. So that's where the second layer comes in, which is just a plain bass line here. Uh, and it sounds like this. Now you can hear that this one is a bit more mono. It has stereo information, uh, but it is, it's kind of just there to add some lower mid range grittiness. If you look at the EQ, this one is focused uh, kind of right here. And then this one is focused a little bit more towards the high end. Uh, so together, they kind of form these this this single layer of frequencies where in the highest high end, there is this this octave shift going on and this this cool groove from left to right and this this change in grittiness, but we still have a stable lower mid range. So that's kind of the idea between having these two layers together. As you can see, we're using saturator and LFO tool here on the group. The saturator is to glue them together. And then the LFO tool is simply for some side chaining, making sure that there's nothing happening on the kick itself. Uh, so now let's listen to the difference, what this makes uh, with and without uh, the stereo layers. So you can hear it just changes that simple kick and bass that we have, uh, which is a nice gritty kick and bass already. Uh, it has a nice click to it. I really like it. Um, but it turns it into this cool rhythmical idea as well. And it's just a lot more groovy and a lot more danceable because of that. So the same idea happens here in example two. Now this is also from an extract of a, a track that I've been working on. So is the first example. And um, here, as you can see, the stereo layer is a lot simpler. We just have this, uh, two beat loop here, uh, where we have this one octave shift up and it sounds like this. 
but it has this kind of cool metallic effect to it. So let's look at the patch. And you can see some of the ideas have been implemented here again. Uh, we have uh, the panning here set up, as you can see the modulation. Uh, we have our filter cutoff here. Uh, now we're not doing anything with a macro this time, uh, but we are doing something special with the waveforms. So let's look at the waveforms here. You can see again, we have removed the lower octaves, but what you can also see is that we have randomized the face uh, of each of the harmonics. This can be done by going here and selecting randomize all. And the same was done for this one, although here some more harmonics have been removed. Again, using randomize all, you get these random phases. And that just gives it a different tone. It doesn't sound like a saw wave anymore. It just sounds like this kind of almost metallic mesh noisy uh, kind of wavetable, even though it still has the saw wave harmonic. So it's very closely related to that saw wave. As you can see, we have some effects here. We have some soft clipping. We have some stereo width here already some hyper here and some dimension. We have a compressor to get all of the frequencies out nice. And then we have a high pass filter to make sure that there's definitely no bass stuff happening here. And then finally, we just put it within the frequency area that we want. We don't want all of the high end. We don't want it to be too aggressive because then it sounds overwhelming. Although this also sounds very cool. I kind of want to make some space for the drums and the hi-hats and the leads that we have. So those were the two examples. Let's now get into uh, making a stereo layer. Uh, so I've chosen to take uh, the kick and bass from the second example. Uh, again, they sound like this without a stereo layer. And we're just going to add a MIDI track that we can work on. Uh, and I'm for now just going to keep it simple. So I'm going to try to combine some of the techniques that we have. Uh, so I'm going for a fa fairly complex rhythm, uh, but also kind of get that metallic meshy sounding effect that you get by randomizing uh, the soul wave. And I'm deliberately going to keep it at one here. I'm not going to use the two oscillators so we can switch between the two and you can hear the difference. So let's set that up. I'm quickly going to turn this down. I'm just going to set up a uh, quick little envelope here. Um, it doesn't have to be that great. And I'm going for an 80 dB uh, per octave filter here for now. So now that we have this basic of the sound, as you can hear, it's time to work on our rhythm so that we can make decisions on the sound design based on the rhythm that we've created. So I'm going to add some notes here. So I've just created some basic pattern here and uh, what now the magic is, is that we want to A, set the octaves and B, set the velocity. So I'm going for a very simple pattern. Um, it's this reggaeton pattern here. Um, but here I want to make a little adjustment, which makes it sound like this. And now using the velocities, I can just kind of set an idea of which uh, ones I want to emphasize. And I'm going to do a little bit of a cool thing here, is that I am going to set the velocities opposite of the octaves. Now that's going to give it a very cool effect, in my opinion, in that it sounds, it sounds almost like there's two rhythms fighting, um, but it gives it a cool effect in the sense that it's, it, it's both rhythms playing at the same time. So all we have to do is set our velocity up here. And as I said, I'm going to do that on both oscillators so later we can hear the difference. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to duplicate this out. And now we have this. So it's sounding nice already. Uh, it's a little bit too loud, obviously, for the baseline because we haven't mixed it in yet. Uh, but one thing that I'm noticing is that I don't have enough stereo. So I'm going to fix that using a hyper. And the important thing here is that you want to set it to re-trigger. I'm also going to add a dimension expander here. Uh, so this is going to introduce the stereo that we need. Now let's turn it down until we find the sweet spot where we can hear it enough uh, that it's not overpowering, but it's also not drowned out by my, our main bass and kick.
At this point in my processing, what I'd like to do is I'd like to set it up so that it's gain stage properly. As you can see right now, uh, the output of the synth isn't hitting zero dB. We want it at zero. So a trick that can really help here if you're still not hitting zero with some soft clipping and turning up the volume level is using a saturator and just soft clipping it off here. Uh, I'm going to add 5 dB because I think that's around the ballpark where it starts to uh, really take some gain reduction and starts to, to glue it all together as well as clip it to zero. Now we have to set our volume accordingly. I think around 19, 20 dB below um, what we have here. Obviously this is minus 10 and minus 18. So it's like eight decibels below our main base. Maybe that's... Okay, I'm going to settle on 12 decibels below our main base sound. And to notice that both of these are now clipped at zero. So those are actual relative volumes between uh, the peak levels of both of the sounds. So I quickly want to show you what it sounds like if you just use a normal saw wave. That also sounds cool, but it doesn't give the same effect of this metallic kind of feeling. Obviously we run into the problem in that this is not uh, rolled off at the, the, the bottom. So if we do that, it's going to sound a lot less aggressive and it will actually sound like this. It's whatever you like, you can obviously play with it. Um, one final thing to do if you're running into some mixing troubles is to just high pass it. Uh, there might be some effects that you're putting on here that can reintroduce some of those bass frequencies. Uh, let's actually check uh, this here, if that's happening. You can definitely see that there's some mess happening there, so we can just remove that. And again, if you want to place it in a specific frequency range because you have other elements in your track, you can just low pass it. Uh, maybe you want to remove some of the that lowest mid range. And really focus it on the, the kind of the, the middle, uh, the high middle uh, here from like 1k to 3, 4k. So that your leads sit right above that uh, and, and around that area. And then you have your drums on top of it. And obviously your main kick and bass sit below that. The final thing that you might want to do is add some panning. As I've uh, shown in the examples, you can use panning to create more interesting stereo. Uh, so that's the final thing we'll do in the patch. And for this case, I'm going to go with a one over two note here. I'm just going to try this setup here and uh, do it like this. I'm just going to throw that on each of the panning knobs here. So we have this. Obviously from here you can be creative, you don't have to follow these rules. Uh, one final thing I recommend doing is some stereo processing once you do panning. Uh, or when, when you get really crazy with the stereo as well. And the way I do that is with a multiband stereo processor. Let's put that in front of the saturator. And then finally here, um, we can just mess around here. And I'm going to set everything below 1K uh, a little bit less wide and then everything above that a bit wider, like this. This one is not needed, it's just two bands. And then here with this control, we can set the global total width that we want to aim for. So here the stereo layer, obviously for this example, is a little bit more upfront. Uh, I finalized it at minus uh, 13 decibels. You can also set it lower, more in the background. Uh, here it's uh, 17 decibels lower. That main bass is definitely now taking over. Uh, and you can even get away with having it very much in the background. Again, you hear it more in this particular example because there's nothing else in terms of the production going on. If it was a full production, and minus 27 dB here, or 
um, 10 dB or 17 dB below our main baseline, you wouldn't be able to hear this in like a full production. So that's going to be the video for today. Um, if you enjoyed this, leave a like. If you have any other suggestions, as I said, leave it in the comments. I can uh, definitely take a look at those. Um, but for now, this is going to be the video. If you're new here, uh, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and also my live streams. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.